Today, on Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat, the 20-foot Shamrock project moves closer to completion as the rigging crew drops in a new engine. Now this boat came in with a real small budget, if you guys remember. This engine was more than his original estimate to redo the whole boat. Florida Sportsman Boating Editor George Labonte joins Mitch Dreisbach on his modded out 24-foot caravel. Hey! This is it, huh? Morning! How's it going? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing great. Good. What there a rig. Is. Thank you. And as Brian lines up a test run for the 20-foot Shamrock, a rigging problem may put his plans on hold. So I get all set up, everything, get ready to mock the uh, first one up, and I go, uh-oh, we've got a problem here. All coming up on Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. All right, so we're moving along really nicely with the 20-foot shamrock. Mike laid down that flag blue all grip on the hull like he's done it a million times. It looks incredible. I'm super excited about this boat. I'm starting to see it come together now. We need to get this boat over to Steve, drop the engine in, and start to get this thing put together in the rigging shop. Now, the engine on this boat is a 357 Merc Cruiser. He's going way up into horsepower. He's also getting a fuel-injected motor, so he's not gonna have any problems with this thing starting up and having any hiccups with carburetors and things like that. Now this boat came in with a real small budget, if you guys remember. This engine was more than his original estimate to redo the whole boat. So I really hope this thing really makes the boat something unique and one of a kind that makes Dave super happy and excited. Also the fact that it's freshwater cooled, he doesn't have to worry about all the salt water inside the engine when he's not using it. We just got the shamrock back uh, from the uh, paint and body shop and uh, Boy, the boat turned out beautiful. So I'm ready to get this engine in, get this job rolling and moving on because it's got to be delivered here in about a week or so. So I got a couple people helping me. We get it up there, lined up, dropping it in slowly. This is a real tight fit, so we can't let that engine move around as we're going down or we're going to uh, cause some paint damage. Got it in, it wasn't perfectly lined up. The height of the uh, adjustments on the pads, I had to work with that because you got to get this coupler on the transmission and the coupler on the shaft lined up perfect or you're going to have a lot of vibrations in the boat when you're running it. So that's no big deal. I've got plenty of adjustment room to go either way. Get bolted down, secured, and then I'll make my final adjustments from there. Everything looked great on this installation. I mean, this is, this is a big power plant in a small hole. We, we got it to work. This guy's going to be really happy with this. So it's a really good thing we did that test fit. Originally, Steve was able just to drop the engine in, now he's in that console area. This console is really unique. This console was not for the boat. If you guys remember, it had a starboard console. It looked horrible. It was like, really? Give me a break. So I decided this thing's gonna get a new, European, modern look to this old classic boat. I'm really looking forward to see this thing inside the boat. Well, this new switch panel we're doing on this, we're using Boca Tech switches, which are really cool switches. They've got a built-in breaker in them, so it makes me building the panels a little bit easier and uh, makes the job move along a little bit better, too. So it was time to lay this acrylic up on the dash panel. Sometimes on these projects, I have these visions right from day one, and I know what I want to do. When I got this console from my buddy, I saw the dash and I said, I'm going with black acrylic and I'm flush mounting a Garmin from the back. I knew that right away. So I took it upon myself to fit this dash and make it look incredible, unique, and totally one of a kind. So I'm really gonna be happy when he sees this thing and it's like taking him off to another planet. Well, I, I pretty much got the console, everything installed on the console that I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna get in there and start on some of the pre-wiring. Boy, the old console that came out of this boat, made out of starboard, they used speaker wire as power wire. They used household wire. I mean, that it was just a nightmare in there. This guy is going to be so happy when he sees what I've done with this console. Everything's going to have marine grade wiring, uh, nice fuse panel for my electronics. 
Like I said, the switches got their built-in breakers, but I still got to supply a main breaker that supplies power to all them switches. So, and everything's marine grade. This guy, when he looks in this console, he's going to go, wow, unbelievable. All right, so Steve came in the office and told me the 20-foot Shamrock console is ready for its install. I want to be part of this. As we got it up into the boat, I took a step back, I looked at it, and I was just thinking, oh my God, this is exactly what I envisioned. The lines, the big radiuses, everything flows so beautifully in this boat. Dave's going to freak out when he sees this thing. I'm really happy at the way this turned out, really pleased. So now, now I can move on uh, mating everything and the wiring in the boat to my console and uh, get this job done. When we come back, Brian and the rigging crew at MCU make moves on the 20-foot Shamrock project, moving closer to the finish line. This segment brought to you by Bird's All Marine Design, quality marine and sport fishing products. Bird's All Marine Design has been a leader in aftermarket and custom boating accessories for over 35 years. Based in West Palm Beach, our facility specializes in the manufacturing of custom T-tops, leaning posts, consoles, rod holders, marine canvas and upholstery products, and a wide variety of anodized aluminum hardware. Come visit our spacious West Palm Beach facility anytime or visit us on the web at birdsallmarine.com to learn more about our most innovative products. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us as the rigging crew at MCU works to complete the 20-foot Shamrock Project with a test run in their sights. So early on, as we were designing the console and engine box area, me and Roberto decided to move these batteries forward. David mentioned it earlier that he read in some forums that a lot of people with these early shamrocks move some of the weight forward, and it's very obvious why. They've got the fuel tanks all the way aft in the boat. The engine's midship, and there's nothing in the bow of this boat. It's actually very light. With the horsepower we're putting in, this boat's gonna run very bow proud. It's not gonna hurt putting a little bit of weight forward. So I'm really looking forward to see what Steve does with the installation on the batteries. We decided to, uh, to move the batteries in the Shamrock. We're going to move them up forward of the engine before they were in the console on a little shelf in there. And it's, it was just a nightmare to get to if you had to check your battery connections. So I'm going to put my battery charger, my batteries, and my battery switches, and my two fuses for the uh, automatic uh, bilge pumps up in this forward compartment. I put them in there the way I think Brian's going to like them. And uh, so I'm just waiting for him to come over and check it out, make sure he agrees, and then, uh, then I'll move on. All right, so Steve got the battery trays all laid out the way he wanted to do it. Typically, he always asks me, hey, Brian, what do you think? And I give him the go ahead or I move things around. Well, I know pretty much any way that I arrange the batteries and battery charger in this compartment, it's not going to be right. Brian's going to come over. He may move the battery tray one inch over that way, another one a half an inch over that way, but uh, he's the boss. He can do that. I look down, the battery trays aren't where I want them. I shifted things around, I put them where I'd like to have them, and I think it would be more functional for the customer in the future. I've got to look at those things. It's not always what's easier for the guy to rig the boat, but it's how easy it is for the guy who owns the boat later on to work on and access and do things to the boat. The way we did this layout on this, you know, you got one hatch compartment that you pull up, you got access to your batteries, your battery charger, and, it's, and your battery switches. It's real easy to get to. You don't have to reach up in the console, and it's just, it makes it nicer. So as Steve's wrapping up this wiring, I'm up in the boat, I'm looking at some things, and I'm noticing, I'm like, I remember this boat coming in here with this rat's nest, the spider webs, just wires everywhere, not to mention the solid strand copper wire that came out of a house. Dave's not gonna know what to do with himself when he sees this wiring job. Everything's correct. Heat shrink, tinned copper, there's not gonna be any issues in this wire job in this boat for a long time. Now, after that, I'm looking at these colors and I'm like, this thing's really popping. I can't wait to see the platform go on the back. So I'm gonna go get Robbie and Steve and get this thing installed. The platform's actually one of two items that are one of the original things left on this boat. Robbie did a great job grinding this thing down, sanding it, refinishing it, and oiling it. Now we just gotta get these guys to get it on the back of the boat. I'm ready to get this thing on the back of the boat, and I'm looking at the back of the boat. They filled all the old holes, which is, you know, sometimes you don't need to fill all the holes when you're doing a paint job, but this is gonna make it a little difficult on me figuring out exactly where this swim platform was mounted because that's critical to get it back in the spot it's supposed to be. 
thank God for Robbie. Robbie's got a keen eye. He could actually see a little shrinkage in the fill spot where the uh, support rods going from the swim platform to the transom of the boat. So I did some quick measurements just to verify that, yeah, that's where they go. Measured the rods, measured the angle of them. He picked the spots out and he was right on the money. You got a brand new paint job and, and the, me putting holes in the boat and if I don't get them right, then it makes me look like an idiot. But uh, I've gotten pretty good at uh, drilling once, checking twice. So after a little mishap on the transom with the installation of the bracket, the guys figured things out, got it installed. It looks incredible. It's exactly the look I was going for. Now that I'm looking at the transom of the boat, I notice that I'm missing one thing still. I don't care what anyone says, every boat can afford to use a set of trim tabs. And that's all there is to it. And I ordered a set of Bennett trim tabs. I can't wait to get them on the back of the boat. All right, I got the uh, Bennett trim tabs up ready to put on the Shamrock and uh, getting out there and I'm all excited because I want to get this boat out on the water and see what she's going to do. So I get all set up, everything, get ready to mock the uh, first one up and I go, uh-oh, we've got a problem here. These tabs are not going to fit up under this platform. They've got about a 40 degree angle on them and to be able to make this set of tabs work, we're going to have to cut notches in that swim platform. I don't want to ruin this guy's swim platform. All right, so Steve's outside doing the installation of the Bennett trim tabs. He comes into my office, tells me he's got a big problem. He needs to get into modifying the Teak swim platform. The Teak swim platform that's 25 years old and it didn't have to be modified before. What's he talking about? I need to go outside and see what's going on. When we return, Florida Sportsman Boating Editor George Labonte joins Mitch Dreisbach on his modded out 24-foot caravel in this week's One Man's Dream Boat segment. And later, Brian at MCU works to find a rigging resolution on the 20-foot Shamrock Project. This segment brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. At Yamaha, reliability is a family tradition. Meet the next generation. Four new advanced technology-inspired inline four-cylinder performers. Bred from the reliability and boater satisfaction that is part of Yamaha's DNA. They prove that when power gets lighter, faster, stronger, and smarter, boating gets even better. And more satisfying for boaters like you. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us for this week's One Man's Dreamboat segment with Florida Sportsman Boating Editor George Labonte as we feature anglers who have already launched their dream. Florida Sportsman began these features 30 years ago and the dreams just keep getting better. This week we meet up with Mitch Dreisbach. Mitch took a 24-foot Caravel deck boat, which was originally a pontoon boat, and built it into a boat you won't see in Florida waters very often. Now this build was inspired by a trip to Lake Okeechobee in a gator hunt where Mitch decided that the style of boat that this gator hunter had suited him perfectly. This boat is kind of unique. I mean, you don't see very many of them in this part of the world here, and it's a really common kind of boat over on the flats in, you know, typically East Texas, Laguna Madre, that's the yeah. standard style boat. Yeah, Have there's you... there's a guy uh, that we, uh, a gator hunted off of with a, a Dargle. Dar uh, yeah, had opportunity like another to do Texas that. built boat. Yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. And, and we had two guys pulling up an alligator on the side of the boat, and the thing was just and uh, like an aircraft it, yeah carrier. it really and didn't waver so i really fell in love with that and being a big bass fisherman growing up you know i was uh i wanted wanted something just an air, aircraft carrier look to it and yeah. uh, be able to have enough room that i don't have to worry about where i stand and where i trip and so this kind of uh was born if you will mitch built an unusually tall tower for this boat to give him great visibility in shallow water i couldn't wait to get up in it and have a look around the vantage point was spectacular Man, you can see it all from up here, <laughs> you can't, can't, you? can't you? I can see the core of the earth. <laughs> kind of the whole mantra of this whole boat was, you know, it was used. Everything came out of salvage from this boat, from the steering wheels to the to the tower. Had to do a little bit of work to, to strengthen up some of the gussets and, the, and uh, some cracks that were in it. But, you know, if you're willing to want to do it, it was, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not in it for the show, I'm in it for more for the go. Well, look, I see some finger mount about two miles away over there. Let's go over to them. <laughs> Mitch and I got to the fishing spot. I went up to the foredeck and one of the first things that I noticed was how much room there was. This boat has got so much real estate, which is perfect for Mitch, he's a big guy. Mitch and his wife and kids can run around on this boat for days without bumping into one another. 
One thing I notice about the boat, man, it's just got a tremendous amount of room on the deck up here. And I know there's a lot going on under that deck that we don't know about. Yep. Why don't you tell me a little bit about how you, when you had this deck off, what, what did you actually have yourself, what were you looking at when you uncovered the boat there? And what actually did you build when you did it? I mean. So the, the big thing about when I bought the hull, it was just rotted and there was foam and, and, and wet foam and it was just heavy and there was just, it, was, it just wasn't structurally okay. So I, I, I got it all the way down to the three quarter, in, you know, the quarter inch fiberglass hull that was completely, completely got bare. Okay. I mean, I spent two and a half weeks with on a grinder uh, trying to get this thing, you know, clean. And, uh, and then from, from there, it was like, okay, you know, and, and put in the bulkheads every two feet. There's Nidacore. So the whole thing's made out of Nidacore. When I had to build the, the deck, I had to build it off the boat because it had to be one big piece. So I had to then pick up the whole thing, you know, and once it was glass, because I glassed it from the bottom too. Right. And so then I put it down, then glass the top. So you built the deck upside down and then flipped it up and put and it on. Bonded, the... boy. Yeah. And it's yeah, sturdy so. too, boy. And it's, it's, it's really... solid. And once you fiberglass both sides, it becomes stronger than uh, than plywood, you know, and it's weighs fractions of, of the, uh, of the weight. So. Oh, well, you can feel it too, the way the boat runs. There's yeah. certainly no issues getting out of the hole. Well, should we go mess around with some fish here? I'm or trying to. Mitch and I moved to another location and I took a minute to talk to him. I really wanted to pick his brain about this unique hull design. All right, Mitch, man, let's talk about this boat a little bit, about this hull design. It's really a unique uh, design. It's not really a traditional catamaran style hull in a sense, you know, but it's it's basically a catamaran. Yep. Boat. I just wanted something that had a, a you know a real shallow uh, draft and you know the hull is only 19 inches from top to bottom. You know, you've made it work really well. You did have to do a little bit of reinforcement on the transom. Though, Absolutely. Right? So when I when I gutted the whole thing, I had to obviously rebuild the transom. And once I cleaned that up and I put in a, a new uh, transom, I raised it about four inches, so you, you kind of can see. You added the jack plate also. The jack plate, absolutely. So when I redid it, I raised it up another four inches, and so I can pull it out of the water and cavitate. You know, I'm like, like okay, now I know it's. I've, I'm using the motor You're in the boat. Every yeah, I'm of, trying to get it. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So oh, that it. was a lot of fun uh, trying to figure that out on paper. You know, it makes you pucker a little bit when you when you start getting in that water, especially when you're in that tower and and uh, it looks a lot shallower than yep. it, <laughs> than it is. But uh, but it's fun. You know, the first the first 14 feet, you know, is a, that cat hall that you've seen, and then it flattens out, and and you have this big wide deck. I mean, you look at standing on the deck and I'm over the water and not over oh, the hall, yeah. you know, so it's crazy. It's, uh, yeah, it's very unique. And I, you know, I just appreciate, you know, the, that, uh, you know, that I, everybody comes out and is like, man, what is that? And I like said, I had no business building the boat. That's nice. <laughs> well, you did a great job. Thank you. Mitch and I finished up our day and I had a chance to really size up this build. He wanted a boat that he could use for some real good shallow water fishing take his kids to the sandbar, let them jump off the tower. Just kind of an all-purpose boat for the family, but one that he could also fish off of. He really hit a home run with this build. He did a great job. With an initial purchase price of $5,000, and after spending $11,000 in repairs and custom modifications, the cost of Mitch's dream boat comes to a total of $16,000. When we return, Brian at MCU aims to find a solution to the rigging issues on the 20-foot Shamrock Project. This segment brought to you by Bennett Marine, superior by design. 50 years ago, Bennett Marine changed boating forever, inventing the trim tab, getting you on plane faster, improving fuel efficiency and performance, balancing loads. Today, more than 1 million systems later worldwide, boats all sizes, Bennett innovation, durable and dependable trim tabs and hatch lifters, your only source for both hydraulic and electric systems, Bennett trim tabs, superior by design, legendary service, enjoy the ride. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Due to the swim platform installed on the 20-foot Shamrock, the crew at MCU has not been able to mount the trim tabs they ordered. With the deadline looming, the team may now have their solution. So I gave Bennett a call to tell him our situation. They actually said that's not going to be a problem, they have a resolve. They actually make a special tab for these unique situations, and they told me they'd send it right up. Okay, we got the new set of tabs in for the Shamrock, and I'm ready to get these things put on and uh, check them out. Yeah, okay, cool. These things have got less of a degree on them. The first set I had, the, the mounting pad was like two-thirds of the way back on the uh, 
trim plate itself. This is at the very trailing edge of the tab. This set of tabs is going to work on this boat, so I'm ready to install them. Well, I've got to get this tab mounted to the boat, you know, so I shoot my measurements. I want the uh, beginning edge of it, I want it a quarter of an inch higher than the bottom of the, the hull of the boat. So I got that, got that secured. Now I'm gonna mount my actuator to the tab itself because I gotta get the very trailing edge of the tab. I like to get that right around 3 eighths of an inch up. So that way you always have negative tab. You can always bring them up. You get them mounted too low, you can't bring them up. You're gonna be, the tab's gonna be working without even being actuated to go down. So you wanna be able to get the tab up out of the water correctly. So I got all that marked up. I figured out where my top foot's going to go through the transom. I, I mark it, uh, pull it back, drill my holes, goop my 5200 on it, and then uh, secure the uh, top it actuator to the transom of the boat. Now I'm ready to uh, move up to the console to install the switch and the uh, control box for this set of electric uh, trim tabs. Bennett supplies a nice little template for the uh, switches, which is cool. I usually take my uh, template for that and I lay it out on the dash and figure where the best spot's going to be that it's going to be user friendly to the throttle because you, you, you want that switch panel close to the throttle that way you can still have your hand on the throttle and still activate your trim tabs. So found the spot for it, I'm going to drill my hole, get that secured and then I'm going to install the, uh, the brains of the system is going to be mounted in the console to control box. Now I'm ready to run my wiring for my tabs in the back to the control box and then also run the power wire to the control box. Switch panel itself, you've got a orange wire which is going to be the constant power. I ran that to the fuse panel. And then also you have a purple wire which is for auto retract. So I'm just going to jump it right over right to my gauges to the uh, key on power for the gauges so that way if you could trailer in the boat or anything like that, as soon as you turn that key switch off, if your tabs are down, they're gonna automatically come up, and that is a cool design. Everything else is plug and play. The wiring coming from your tabs, just plug right into it, Deutsch connectors, and also for your switch panel that controls the trim tabs, it just plug and play, plugs right into the control box. So, got all that plugged up, got everything zip tied up, looking good. Now ready for a test run. So now that Steve's got the tabs on, everything fit really good, we had no issues or problems, time to give Dave that call to tell him to come get his new boat. Next week on Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat, Dave Osgood heads over to MCU to see his fully restored 20-foot shamrock for the very first time. Florida Sportsman Boating Editor George Labonte heads out with Michael Matson, owner of a classic 20-foot sea craft, to discuss how he redesigned the boat from the bottom up. And... Ryan at MCU meets with the owners of a 23-foot Dorado who are looking to make some major modifications that will better suit their lifestyle. The filming of Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat has been shot on location at Marine Customs Unlimited. You dream it, we build it.